Hey there everyone of the Pinewood Builders Discord. For the past week I've been reverse engineering the game Pinewood Builders Computer Core. And I want to make this a short video, show you what I've been doing for the past week. So why have I been doing this? I've had the one dream and goal throughout this entire process. It's just to find the third code at the mainframe at the center of the map. And spoiler alert, I failed. Let's get into this. I'm a developer and I mainly specialize in scripting. I realized that one day I could use my scripting skills to possibly crack the third code of the mainframe at the Pinewood computer core. So that's exactly what I tried. I first tried to turn all the developers' names at Xylem and PIA into numbers by converting the letters into numbers by their alphabetical order, but that was no dice. Then I remembered, hey, I know how to look inside the code of Roblox games and use it to my advantage. Kids, this is what we call reverse engineering. How'd I do it? I used an exploit. Yes, I know, I'm such a terrible person for cheating. I genuinely believe that exploiters are only bad when they ruin the fun for others, which I am not doing. So yes, ban me if you want, but for any PIA right now, I'd like to testify before you ban me. I'm actually serious about this. Moving on, I won't tell you which exploit I used, but here's what I did. Oversimplified. I had looked inside of the game's workspace and looked for anything that may be correlated with the rising mainframe at the center, and found a model called Meltdown Damage Items, which you guessed it, had the model named Core Rise instead of it. I tried looking for any sign of a third code, and then a miracle happened. It was a trap, and I fell for it, because it was a fake message of Takaisho just laughing in our faces and rubbing salt in the already gushing wound that nothing I do will ever be good enough. He also put an attribute that said trolling equals true in there, which kind of makes things better somehow. But I didn't let this stop me. I kept searching, and eventually found a module script that a local script was retrieving every time a player pressed a button on the passcode pad on the mainframe. I used a fancy little trinket called a decompiler, and it let me see all the little goodies that made the code on the pin pad on the core work. It was easier to just download the entire map onto my computer with an instant saver, and because I'm so nice, I will not be releasing this to anybody. My goal is to find the third code, not to ruin Takaisho's entire life. I had no access to the server scripts, because that's how it works nowadays, which made this many times more difficult to find the third code. This gave me only one option, brute force. What I mean by this is that we try every number with seven digits on the third code and see if one comes up. Since the programming language that Roblox runs is so fast, we'd be able to try a hundred codes a second if we directly send it to the server instead of manually pressing each button and clicking out all nine million possible options, which you already know I don't have the time for. That's what I did. You may see a script below this video, and this is the script that I tried to use and automatically put in the first two codes when the mainframe goes back down after you take too long trying to put in the third. How does it work? I figured out that every time someone presses a button on the pin pad, it gets sent to the server via a remote event. This is how everyone in the server can see it, because the server would be able to replicate the button you pressed onto the screens of everybody else. That's how something called filtering enabled works. There used to be a time where the system Roblox uses just didn't exist, and for a lot of people here, how do I say it? Uh, Let's just say there were very memorable times. I figured out that if you give this remote event four parameters, the words code panel request, the type of action you were trying to do, the parent of the code panel GUI you were pressing a button for, and the number you were trying to press, you could send a valid request to send a button. Here's an actual clip of the actual script that I used in action. I was not touching my keyboard or any of the buttons on the panel. This was fully automated. But I have to give it to Xylem. They were very good with making and refining Kronos off of the Adondis anti-cheat. If you put even one wrong or invalid parameter, you were kicked from the game, not banned, thankfully. 
Also, did I mention an account called Sorry Tokai? Because, yes. But still, even after this major victory I had, I was still a loser. I had realized that even though I could make my local script that I had injected into the game super fast, the actual server script was so slow with taking requests from the client. Because sadly, the server script gets the final say. That brought the speeds of each attempt from hundreds a second to around one every second or two. I calculated how long the brute force would take under these conditions, and yeah, no thanks, I actually have a life. Sadly, this is where my journey ends. I waved my white flag and accepted defeat. Although it would be real delightful since, you know, I basically know this whole entire game inside now now to get some kind of scientist rank, but that's not the reason why I did this. I did this to finally gain vengeance for the many, many people who have tried and failed at the third code for more than eight years since the Rising Core was introduced. Who knows, the third code may not even exist unless PIA wants it to. Also, did I mention the literal Mac Mini server that I got for no reason from AWS to do this? That doesn't really matter though. The third code of Pinewood Computer Core still remains a mystery. But I mean, if you want to give me some sort of rank, that would be pretty nice. Oh my goodness, I'm such a nerd.